And here we are in another new season. The wet and rainy season. It's so cool looking, all purple and stuff. So, what does Tangent have to say? Tangent is watching a construction crew build scaffolding for the new engineering pavilion. They're using a mushwood, which is so light that one person can easily lift a 10 meter long pole and stack it into place. She points towards them. Human beings are so great, don't you think? Before we landed, this was all just dirty jungle. Now it's civilization. Well, there's beauty and greatness in jungles too. I've been learning about the adaptability in writing and biology class. The book says it's what sets us apart from the animals. Like, we don't need fur because we can make warm clothes, and if it's too hot, we can make air conditioners instead. Uh, animals probably have neat adaptations too. I mean, just look at all the cool animals there are on Earth, and I'm sure on this planet too. Tangent rolls her eyes at you. Maybe, but even if they do, they haven't. I haven't seen any sign of intelligent life here. It's just those big dumb xenofauna. Well, some of the animals are smart and friendly. Tang looks skeptical. They're still animals, Solana. Maybe they're just pretending to be nice so you'll feed them. You're lucky it didn't eat you. She folds her arms. Dorb swath look cute, but one can eat through a bag of rice in less than 30 minutes. Even an herbivore can be dangerous here. It doesn't have to eat, to eat you to be able to hurt you. Together, you watch the four men put the blueprints for the scaffolding onto the floating screens of her hollow palm. It raises the scaffolding to check her progress. I'd like to see an alien do that, Tang says primly. Humans look defenseless and weak, but we're the strongest species in the galaxy. Who else can literally bend reality to their will? Not a stupid alien, that's for sure. How do you know there aren't other intelligent aliens out there? I mean, this is just one planet, after all. She puts one finger to her chin. I'm living proof that humanity is greater than our biology, she says. All of us are really our with our genetic enhancements, we're the next step in humanity's evolution from great ape to galactic super species. Cool. <laughs> um, hey, Anemone. Anemone is running around the sports ball court, touching her hand and counting each corner. So she's playing some more. Cool, fun. Hey, Cal. Cal is scratching a stick listlessly in the dirt, seemingly uninterested in your presence until you get right in his face. Oh, hey Solana, he says, mustering up a hollow smile. Sorry, I don't really feel like playing today. Um, do you want a mush with log? I know you really like plants. Neat, Cal exclaims, taking your gift and peering at it inquisitively. I don't know what I'll do with it, but I love it. Thank you. Well, I'm glad I was able to cheer you up. Oh, Cal's mom, Tira, is sitting with Cal against the makeshift fence that surrounds the gardens. Cal looks absolutely shattered. Tira rubs his back comfortingly. He sees you and musters up a brave smile that doesn't reach his eyes. Hey, Solana, it's good to see you. I'm definitely going to need to work on biology so I can cheer you up with the animal facts again. Dee's is listening to his hear speak completely ignoring you. Yeah. Hey, Dad. Hey, Sun Mary. Your dad greets. Working hard or hardly working? He ruff He laughs and ruffles her your hair. Uh, I think I'm gonna go. Ooh, another brushwood. Your mom. Uh. I don't think I really want to work in the mud, so I think I'm gonna go to school again. This week in biology class, you're studying sugar bugs. 
This native species looks like a purple marshmallows about the size of your fist, all puffy and squishy and kind of cute. They don't move or do much, but if you tickle them, they exude a, an edible syrup from a hole at the top of their bodies. And now Professor Hal says, you're going to dissect one. Uh, I... I don't... I don't want to hurt it. Instead, you and Cal write an essay about the strange creatures. Cal looks relieved. I'm taking mine home with me, he says, petting it sweetly. It spurts out a bit of syrup, and Cal laughs. I think that means she's happy. While researching for the essay, you learn that the sugar bug can actually regenerate after being cut into tiny pieces. That's how it reproduces. Your teacher was probably planning to surprise you with that fact. The morning after the, the dissection, the classroom is filled with whole happy sugar bugs once more. <laughs> okay, so we guess one, one, two, 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 and fifteen! You're having a terrifyingly familiar dream. A monster crashing through the walls, unfamily large, and every part of it wriggling and moving and searching for something. It tramples through the crawlony as you watch helplessly. Time shifts to the wreckage of your home. You're picking through it, looking for something, tears streaking down your dust-covered face as you lift heavy pieces of debris, searching. You wake up shouting, no, but your voice is drowned out by deafening rumble from the skies outside. The bedroom window is covered in water. It's pouring down from the clouds. You guess this must be rain, but you've never experienced it before. There's a bright flash up from outside, then another crack and rumble. Thunder. It must be a thunderstorm. It's still in the early hours of the morning. You've already almost forgotten your bad dream, but you're too unsettled to go back to sleep just yet. The rain beats down on the roof of your quarters. Join now and then with great peals of thunder, like the footsteps of an angry beast. Um, I think I wanna to go to my parents. <laughs> Your dad is awake too, watching the rain from the large porthole in the kitchenette. He gives you a hug and you gaze out together. This is good, he says quietly. It means we'll have plenty of water for the crops. Pure, healthy water, just like on Earth. Everything's going to be okay, my little potato. You hug your dad tight and hopes he's right. And now, it is mid-wet season. Uh, hey, Tangent. Tangent looks up at the sky and shades her eyes. It's too bright, she complains, and it's too hot. And the nights are too cold. Living on the strand spirit meant we never had to experience discomfort. Remind me why we aren't putting our resources into repairing the ship? Because we're trying to start a colony on the planet? And Emily holds her stomach as you approach. Does the air make you feel hungry all the time or is it just me? I, I think it's just you. Dees has something to say. It's pouring rain and everyone's trying to stay dry under the grass-roofed pulpus. Everyone except Dees! Off in the distance over the wall near the sports ball field, he's definitely sulking. I should probably tell someone? You tell security chief Rhett that you saw Dees up to no good around behind the garrison. He's too distracted to trying to put buckets under the various leaks in the roof to pay much a, a, to pay you much attention. Thank you, Solana. I'll check it out later. He says, waving you off. If there's a danger to the colony, one of the lookouts will catch it. You're not so sure. You know Dees. He's very good at hiding when he doesn't want to be found. Uh, maybe I should, should try to report back to Tangent on that? Uh, no. Well, hey, Cal. 
Cal's mom, Tira, is sitting with Cal against the makeshift fence that surrounds the garden. Cal looks absolutely, absolutely shattered. <gasps> I can share a nature fact with him now! Yay! You recently overheard the children learning how to count by studying hop eyes. Hop eyes have one foot and two forked tails and three stomachs and four eyes. Wow. And if you see five of them together, that's lucky. Cal laughs, finishing the mnemonic with you. Wait, how did they find out that hop eyes have three stomachs? I don't want to know. Where are my parents? Dad! Hey Sprout, your dad greets you. How are your classes going? I know it's hard to sit in a classroom while there's so much to explore, but everything in life is gonna get easier for you if you take the time now to learn about a lot of things. He laughs, who knows, maybe you'll be running this place one day. Um, I think it looks like I'm pretty close to getting my biology up. Tang is all, is absent most almost all of this month. Hal explains that Chief Engineer Instance has asked for Tang's help with a few experiments. Because you're judged on what you know, not on what you prove you've learned in class, many older students choose to skip class and instead get hands-on experience with their field of interest. Tang's been working closely with Instance since she was just a kid. One, two, three, four, five slots. One, two, three. Oh! I think about zero, one, two, 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 and sixteen! And I got three stars again! And now, it's the late wet season. Cool. Okay. Hey, Cal. Forty. Okay, so now I need forty. Um, hey dad, he's on break. I haven't talked to Mars in a bit. Hey Salada, Mars says, looking you up and down with a sneer. Your shoes are gross. That's what you get for walking around the dirt out there. She sniffs, not me. I'm sticking to the ship until they pave over all that icky mud. I wonder if maybe she's scared of more than just getting dirty. Um, I don't know. And you know what, Mars? I don't mind mud that much, actually. So I think I'm gonna help shovel dirt today. I don't see... Oh. There was... Okay, the garrison. If I can find anything to collect. This month, maybe? I'm not seeing anything though. Hey, Mom. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna help you in geoponics this month. You join Cal at a particularly fragrant pile of compost. He's trying to use his hoverboard as a wheelbarrow, carefully pushing compost off into the pile. Don't you just love this? Cal asks excitedly. Um. Yeah, I mean, dirt's, dirt's cool. No, no, he laughs. I mean, just this. He waves his arm, dirt encrusted up to the elbows, to take in the entire greenhouse. 
We get to help plant stuff and watch it grow. Even if we're just moving dirt around, we're still helping. Well, uh, well, he considers, I like digging holes in the dirt, cause it's so full of surprises down there. I found a worm. Wait, let me see if I can find her again. He sticks his hand in the compost and rummages around, his tongue sticking out of his mouth. I guess she got away, he says after a minute. She was real shiny like a rainbow. Ooh, cool. You know what? I like digging too. I like digging little holes too. I, I think it's fun. I, when I was little, I even made a little mud volcano in my backyard and put little flowers around it. So, yeah, it's fun. Wait, he says, I just thought of a thing I like better. He shows you as he's played his hand, getting dirt under my fingernails. He laughs. I don't know why, It's but it's just the best. I think I have to disagree with you on that one, but okay. And 13! These days have been getting shorter, with, on with only the yellow sun barely skimming the horizon. One morning, you wake in the darkness and have to check your hollow palm to know what time it is. You see a hollow stream from Mars. Good morning to all my pals, if you can even call it morning. They've named it glow season because, like, everything is crazy glowing out there in the dark. I'm staying the heck inside for the month. What's even the point of going out if you can't see anything? It's going to be a long, boring month. But what if it's really pretty? Whoa, that is really pretty. You peek out the window. The wormhole is the biggest you've ever seen it, like a massive fiery ring in the sky. The planet must be very close to it now. And out in the jungle, something new is taking place. The plants are flowering, glowing, iridescent blooms, and everything is full of life. There are strange new sounds, long hooting calls and gurgling roars. After Mars's message is a notice from the council warning everyone to stay safe inside, Tammy's dad and the other surveyors have been called back and the gates closed for the month. There's tension in the air, as if everyone is waiting for something. And now, it's glow season.